You didn't say get dressed, Brian. Right. I assume they are. It's Tuesday. Monday, you have an excuse. <laughs> Brian went out for a book signing, if you missed the show yesterday, and met a lot of your fans, and they all said, you wouldn't believe how many times I'm halfway dressed and you tell me to get dressed. <laughs> yeah, dressed or they overslept and we tell them. The problem is when uh, Chris Chulo on camera three, I have to remind him to get dressed. He's actually working. Yeah. That's a problem. That's a problem. It's a he problem. shows up barren. <laughs> yep, very and everything. All right. All right, well, we begin with our top story. President-elect Donald Trump's White House, his team is nearing the final stages, guys. That's right, Vice President-elect Mike Pence heading to Trump Tower this morning to review lots of resumes. Yep, uh, Kristen Fisher live in Washington, D.C. with the latest potential cabinet picks. Kristen, it's been a while since we got some names and some positions filled. Maybe today? It could happen today, and we've got a name that has really emerged over the last 24 hours. Rudy Giuliani has emerged at the top of the list for Secretary of State. You know, originally the former New York City mayor seemed to be gunning for Attorney General, but last night he shot it down by saying that he would not be AG in a Trump administration, though we left reporters guessing about Secretary of State. Listen to what Newt Gingrich said about it late last night. Rudy's probably been... <clears throat> the closest surrogate has worked his heart out. Uh, I thought he might prefer so, uh, Attorney General, where he would be brilliant, or Homeland Security, where his experience at 9-11 would be great. I think it would be fabulous to have him as Secretary of State. He would do a lot both to represent America, which is what we need, and to reform the State Department. Another top contender is Alabama Senator Jeff Sessions, one of Trump's earliest and most loyal supporters. So this is by no means a done deal yet, but they're going to have to make a decision very soon. Now, there's been a lot of talk about a Trump administration perhaps not being diverse enough, but Mr. Trump is now reportedly considering an openly gay man, Richard Grinnell, to be ambassador to the U.N. He's also reportedly considering a woman to replace Reince Priebus and run the Republican Party, Ronna Romney McDaniel. She's a niece of Mitt Romney. So that would be a very big olive branch extended to a family member of one of Mr. Trump's most fiercest opponents. Brian Ainsley and Pete. Wow. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. All right. Uh, so let, let's just uh, let's talk about basically some of the names. If Rudy Giuliani comes out there, will he have a hard time uh, getting confirmed? I, I don't know. I don't think so. I, I mean, don't you, think so at Elections all. have consequences. And if you want to pick your in your top cabinet post, what would disqualify a guy like Rudy Giuliani, who's run right. a major city and did it who well cleaned in New up York, the city. who cleaned it up and mm -hmm. has a ton of uh, connections around the world? Right. It was a surprise to people, but you, you can see where it makes sense. Well, Newt Gingrich said anything he wants, basically, he will get, because he's been so loyal to Donald right. Trump, and he's got a great resume. Right. Absolutely. So around 3.15 yesterday, what was everyone doing? Well, if you were lucky enough to be able to, because if your job didn't allow it, you weren't <laughs> able to, to listen to the president yesterday, it was an extraordinary press conference. Yeah, it was. The first one since the election. And about 3.15, he said, before I go overseas to Greece, Germany, and Peru, I'd like to tell you uh, basically how I feel about uh, President Yeah, Trump. he said, I want to clear the brush so we have this conversation here at home before I'm overseas. This right. is, they asked him a lot about Donald Trump, obviously, and this is what he had to say. I think that uh, he successfully mobilized a big chunk of the country to vote for him, and he's going to win. He has won. He's going to be the next president. Uh, and uh, regardless of what experience or assumptions he brought to the office, uh, this office has a way of waking you up. And uh, those uh, those aspects of um, uh, his positions or predispositions that don't match up with reality, uh, uh, he will uh, find shaken up pretty quick because reality has a way of asserting itself. Well, yeah. I mean, I thought he was very diplomatic yesterday, and he's trying mm -hmm. to say that a lot of things he said on the stump, he's not going to be able to do when he gets to the Oval Office. At least he doesn't think he'll be able to do. Also, something else he said was telling. He said that he doesn't think he's an ideologue. He thinks he's more pragmatic. Essentially, what I read that is, he's going to do what works. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that he's also said that he's going to help the transition team and the staffers transition into the White House, because yeah. he has a very short time, Donald Trump, to fill 4,000 positions. Absolutely. It's not any, and, and even inside 
inside the White House. I mean, I, he did a nice job at the podium. I totally agree. I thought he was gracious. I thought he said all the right things that you want to hear. He was but, baited too by some He was baited, and he did a nice job. But I also, there's a lot of proof out there right now or evidence that there's a public position and there's a private position mm -hmm. in the White House. Mm -hmm. Publicly, he's saying the right things. There's a photograph. I don't know if we can put it up on the screen of the Obama staff uh, sort of greeting or seeing Donald Trump when he first arrived at the White House. A lot of you have seen this. Uh, that's not Arms a happy-looking crew right there. I think that's probably more indicative of how they really feel inside the White House about Trump. And there's been some leaking also. Uh, so there's, there's things said publicly, then they go to the that, press with how they really and feel. And that was actually a picture of when the president found out. They were reacting to the results as the results yeah, were coming out. Yeah, because you got it. But you know what? You have to feel sorry. for you, you fight so hard for what was the last 17 months, and then one of the camps is going to be totally out of jobs. Mm -hmm. So they're probably uh, thinking, where's my future? Well, no, here, here's the thing with uh, the president. The president said, I consider it a personal insult if you don't get out and vote for Hillary Clinton. They didn't get out and vote for Hillary Clinton. His legacy was on the line. He made that clear. It didn't work. He campaigned, you could argue, harder than Hillary Clinton for Hillary Clinton, mm -hmm. and it got big crowds, and it didn't work. And now he knows all his executive orders could be overturned in the drop of a hat, snap of a finger, or quick using of the pen, if sure. you use his quote exactly. So he saw that there, and he also, uh, for the longest time, told the whole world, he thought, to be paraphrased, that Donald Trump was not capable and was not competent enough to be president. That's so right. how do you actually go out to the rest of the world and say, that was just rhetoric. Yeah, so he's walked back that rhetoric a little bit, but now through these leaks that, and, and recently yesterday to the Wall Street Journal, they're trying to hint that, well, the job might be too big for Donald Trump. This is what it said inside the Wall Street Journal yesterday. During their private White House meeting on Thursday, Mr. Obama walked his successor through the duties of running the country, and Mr. Trump seemed surprised by the scope, said people familiar with the meeting. Trump aides were described by those people as unaware that the entire presidential staff working in the West Wing had to be replaced by the end of Mr. Obama's term. You can see it as you know to imply that he's just not ready for it. Right, but was President Obama ready for it? Is anyone really <laughs> yeah. ready for it? I, I mean, you have to be. have a transition, and that's why people have said, we want to vote for Donald Trump. We love him because he's not, he's a man of the people. He's not establishment. He doesn't necessarily know how to run a White House, but people have said he hopes that he surrounds, him, surrounds himself with people that do. Ryan's Priebus. He's a track he has record of doing that. plenty of experience. Yep. He, uh, that was a hit. Uh, that was a jab. Uh, that was a unnamed source telling the Wall Street Journal the guy coming over really has a huge ramp up time. Well, it and, doesn't uh, matter. That, but that was. You know? But mean, that is that's designed to make people worried about Donald Trump. Yeah, that's right. Just like the protests that have been going on create instability and uncertainty about what the future looks like. Speaking of uncertainty, though, we've got uh, on a big topic for this administration. Will, the Trump administration will be immigration, uh, sanctuary cities, enforcement of the law, and mayors across the country. I don't know if you've seen this, but mayors in certain cities, we'll put the map up right there, New York, LA, Philly, Chicago, Minneapolis, San Francisco, Seattle, are vowing that we will keep our sanctuary cities. So regardless of what Donald Trump says about enforcement of illegals, about criminals, they're saying uh, you supposedly you're going to be safe in the city no matter what. One of the least safest cities in the country <laughs> is Chicago, run by this man, Mayor Rahm Emanuel, and this is what he had to say. Yeah. To be clear about what Chicago is, it always will be a sanctuary city. To all those who are, after Tuesday's election, very nervous, there's filled with anxiety has been spoken to, you are safe in Chicago. You are secure in Chicago, and you are supported in Chicago. Yeah, except for those people being shot at a dizzying rate. But here's the thing. So what he's actually saying, if you're here illegally, uh, don't worry about it. Now, what Donald Trump has made it clear is that if uh, his focus right now will be securing the border and getting the one to two to three million criminals that are here illegally out of the and country. And as soon as you get caught, right. deportation begins. So as Rahm Emanuel is saying, if I have a criminal in my midst in Chicago and they've got warrants out for the arrest, he's not going to get rid of them? Because Donald Trump is saying one thing, and these sanctuary city mayors proudly stand up and say, don't worry worry about it. I got your back. You're here illegally. And by the way, does he also mean the criminals? Well, exactly. Will you be, you'll be safe in this city. What about the 600 people that were killed uh, in Chicago just this year? The, the 78 in homicides in October alone. It's not a safe city. The other part about it, too, is 80% of the illegal narcotics in Chicago come from the Sinaloa cartel in Mexico because our border is so porous. These mayors and the facts that they don't realize that it's the very policies they oppose that are making their cities dangerous is the ultimate irony. Wait till it happens to one of their children. Talk to the Steinle family. I sat down with them. Their daughter's killer kept coming back over the border. And 
he was repeat he was a repeated criminal. Yeah. He had a long rap sheet. Yep, uh, and now Kate Stanley's uh, dead, and those right. and those uh, kids and those families really meant a lot to um, uh, really meant a lot to Donald Trump, and you could tell that throughout the thing. So tell us how you feel about that. Do you really so salute the mayors for standing up to the president elect, or do you think they got it all wrong? Uh, let's talk about it all right. You have an hour to you. Oh. Always. <laughs> good morning. Hey, good, uh, morning. good morning, everybody. Pete, what? Great to have you Thanks back. Welcome back. Uh, happy Tuesday to all of you. A Fox News alert we start out with right now. There is a manhunt that is intensifying by the minute for a murder suspect who broke out of jail barefoot. Police in central Missouri looking for Daniel Glenn Campbell after they say he slipped out of the back door of a Texas County jail overnight wearing his white and orange jail uniform. He was charged in connection to a double shooting and homicide last month. Officials believe that he could be headed to the St. Louis area. Keep an eye out for that man. In Washington now, House Speaker Paul Ryan is closer to keeping his gavel. House Republicans will hold a secret ballot election today to choose their nominee for Speaker. Now, Ryan is not facing any competition, but some Republicans wanted to delay that vote because they felt it was too soon after the presidential election. Ryan needs a majority of House votes to hold on to the speakership position. Hillary Clinton's next order of business after losing the election, get a Benghazi lawsuit dismissed. Clinton's attorney is asking a judge to throw out a defamation suit that was filed by the parents of two of the Benghazi victims. Patricia Smith and Charles Wood say that Clinton called them liars. Their suit also claims that she mishandled confidential emails and that is what led to their children's deaths. President-elect Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago club could soon turn into a winter White House. Members and staff are reportedly getting ready for new security measures at the Palm Beach property. The future first family is expected to spend Christmas and possibly Thanksgiving there this year. And those are your headlines. Good place to choose it. If you're going to do winter somewhere, might as well do Florida, right? Got a lot right. of properties to choose from. That is right. true. That is true. Right. Life is about to change. Thanks, Thank you. All right, straight ahead. All right, President-elect Trump turning heads for, for saying this about his presidential salary. Well, one dollar. So what do the voters think? We just put it to the dial test and the results, well, they're fascinating. Plus, one woman's new little black dress had a little stowaway, a mouse. Look at that. <laughs> sewn, sewn, sewn inside it. She should have said wow. no mouse. Ew. <laughs> Like Donald Trump prepares to take over the White House from President Obama, Hillary Clinton leaves the spotlight, at least for now. So how do the voters feel about the transition? Lee Carter is the president and a partner at Maz Lansky and Partners, and she joins me now with the brand new dials. Good morning. Good morning. And it's been a week. It has been. It's been exactly a week. It's Tuesday, the Tuesday after the election. Let's start with um, Donald Trump. He was being interviewed mm -hmm. by Leslie Stahl, and she asked him about his salary. And yep. he said he didn't, he didn't want to take a salary. Watch this and watch the dials. <laughs> he didn't even know what the salary is. <laughs> Everyone across the board loved that because he's saving the taxpayer a lot of money. So Republicans gave it an A, Independents A minus, Democrats even gave it a B plus. I don't think I've ever seen Democrats go this high for Donald Trump, but this was a symbolic gesture. It was important. He comes in as an outsider and it really made people think that he was serious about it. All right, the Hillary concession speech. Watch this. We have seen that our nation is more deeply divided than we thought. But I still believe in America, and I always will. And if you do, then we must accept this result and then look to the future. Donald Trump is going to be our president. We owe him an open mind and the chance to lead. So you can see, ultimately, folks gave this an A all the way around. They felt that she gave a very classy concession speech. They appreciated the, her acknowledgement, and um, she was leading by example there. All right, here is Donald Trump talking about meeting with President Obama. This was a meeting that was going to last for maybe 10 or 15 minutes, and uh, we were just going to get to know each other. We had never met each other. Uh, I have great respect. Uh, the meeting lasted for almost an hour and a half. And it could have, as far as I'm concerned, it could, could have gone in for a lot longer. So, Mr. President, it was a great honor being with you, and I look forward to being with you many, many more times in the future. So you can see um, 
all across the board there, Republicans in A, independents in B, Democrats in C, but what was really encouraging to me, despite all of the unrest that we see out there, people really seem to be coming together. And what I heard from a lot of folks was that Donald Trump's tone since the election has really been reassuring. Yeah, we went through so much for 17 months. Everyone just wants unity now. Thank yeah. you so much, Lee. Great to well, be here. coming up, a man with a passport from Pakistan is caught snooping around a water treatment plant. Now, we can't find him. And the threat of ISIS and Al-Qaeda, not just overseas, stunning reports find the groups are operating just as strongly at our southern border. Dr. Sebastian Gorka is here to explain right there with Pete. Coming up next. All right, quick look at the headlines right now. The Somali men convicted of plotting to join ISIS given slaps on the wrist. One was sent to a Minneapolis halfway house after 21 months in jail. The other sentenced to just two and a half years. Both cooperated with the feds. And a man with a Pakistani passport caught trespassing at a Chicago area water plant, sparking fears they may have been trying to contaminate the water supply. That wouldn't have been good. Officials found Sharoon Augustine inside the plant with a duffel bag last week. Makes total sense. Police say he didn't breach any secure areas and told them he was at a gym. Yeah, with a duffel bag. Since then, he vanished. I'm going to look into these stories that bother me. Pete? Do that, Brian. Sebastian? Thank you. All right. Well, it's one of the biggest threats President-elect Trump will deal with when he takes the White House terrorism. But even scarier than ISIS and Al-Qaeda themselves is the fact that terror groups have operated, they are operating cells in Mexico, making it very easy to slip through the border into our country. Here to map out this threat, nobody better than the author of Defeating Jihad, Dr. Sebastian Gorka. Doctor, thanks for being hey, here this morning. Uh, obviously a big election with a lot of change coming, but the threat looms and remains from ISIS and Al-Qaeda. Yeah, what, what are we seeing across, we're going we're gonna to pop it up on the map. What are, you, what are you most concerned about as it pertains to that threat here in the United States? Well, as we discussed yesterday with Brian, we've had in just, two, oh, t just over two years, 124 arrests of ISIS, just ISIS terrorists in America. Now we know there's actually some specificity to what's happening in the South. Sure, so there's a specific portion in this map. Uh, where, where are we looking at? Let's go, let's go to right the... Right down uh, in here, right? Right, right down in here. Put it, put it in context. If, I was just in Arizona. A border control agent came up to me proactively and said, it's out of control. We don't have control of the border, which is not new news to our audience. But this might be new, specifically what we're looking at down here, Doctor. Right, so here is, is this really troubling area. There's about a 60-mile stretch down here, the West Texas area towards New Mexico, just around here, where the border is not secure. So near El Paso, yeah. Correct. And what we have here is reports, the State Department, D.C., tries to deny these, but when you talk to Judicial Watch that actually goes down there, talks to the local police officers, they say, this area is being used by jihadis. Jihadis are cooperating with the local coyotes being smuggled across. There was one case where four ISIS terrorists were found to have used this area to cross into America. How, did they, how does Judicial Watch know that? Where are they getting their information and what's right. their specificity? So, so the Texas Department of Public Safety and FOIA and also from the Mexican authorities. One of the most disturbing things is on the mirror side of El Paso, mm -hmm. right about here, there is a report of an ISIS training camp in Mexico. Wow. Yeah. So reports of an actual ISIS training right. camp just on the other side of the border attempting Correct. to utilize this porous portion here to come into the United States. And one last thing that, that really puts it all together, they have managed to find reports. Do you remember the first ISIS attack in America, mm -hmm. Garland, Texas, that Mohammed art show, yes. and they tried to kill yep. Pamela Geller. Yep. The two guys were killed by the local police. Uh, an associate of those individuals said, my ISIS brothers in Texas and Mexico assisted in that attack. Hmm. And, and we do know that the, the drug cartels, at the right price, Correct. have been more than happy to work with jihadis Correct. to facilitate that. Think about it. You've got a smuggling route, okay? Uh, you're going to use it, right? Whether it's guns, whether it's immigrants, sure. whether it's drugs, or whether it's a terrorist. You don't care. Yeah. Right? Money. If you, you, you money, money, and even with things like sanctuary cities, uh, we seem to not care about the porousness of that. Dr. Sebastian Gorka, thank you very much thank for joining us, as always, an expert. All right, coming up, President-elect Trump already getting major pushback on his deportation plans of illegals. But Judge Napolitano says the critics are fighting a losing battle. He's here live to explain why. And for all the bitter liberals out there, here's some advice for you. Let me give you the quickest and directest route to Canada from Tulsa. When you get to Canada, you're going to hit the, the border here. Make sure you've got your, either your card or your passport. 
A local reporter turning into an international sensation next. But, but first, happy birthday to Lily Aldridge, the Victoria's Secret and Sports Illustrated swimsuit model. She is turning 31 years young today. I check your calendar. It is a huge day for the Fox and Friends family. Ainsley, who I call Ainsley, first <laughs> uh, has written her first children's book. It's called Take Heart, My Child, A Mother's Dream, and it's out today. Wow. And get this, Pete also loves this book. Oh, it's fantastic, absolutely. <laughs> the book is inspired by her childhood and notes from her father. And it's a lullaby to her one-year-old daughter, Hayden. Thank and you, Ainsley, how long did you think about doing this? Can you believe Janice the day and I were just here? talking about this because Janice and I went to lunch. Janice is over here. We went to lunch like four or five years <laughs> ago. Thank you. Janice has her children's book out, and we both said we've written children's books. Mine was about my dog at the time. Remember this? Yeah, come I, on over here. I went to the publisher and uh, read them the dog book. Come on over. And they were like, we like this, but we think, tell us about your, your life. And I said, well, my dad, my parents are amazing. My mom's a school teacher. Dad was a basketball coach. And then um, put himself through college. His goal was to put all three of us through college. So he was gone a lot being a coach, as you know. Hmm. And because um, you coach, but you, anyway, right. yeah. he, was, he was a college basketball coach. They're gone all the time. Yeah. So dad said, I want to put my kids through college. That's my goal. So I'm going to take another job. One of his basketball players, dad's hired him. So we moved to Columbia, South Carolina. Dad had this great job and mom was a school teacher so it was while she went to school at 7 30 she had to be there at 7 30 in the morning to teach the kids so dad was in charge of breakfast so next to our cereal bowls he always left a note a scripture a saying so there's dad that was hmm. the day we met oh <laughs> <laughs> but um here's the children's book and it's just sayings that my parents taught us especially some of those notes that dad left me and so when i was pregnant with my daughter i wrote this book and so i'll read a little bit of it for you guys right all right here's page can i sit one. on the floor at cross-legged <laughs> <Yes. Yeah. laughs> yeah. it says before you were born oh i wanted a baby so badly before you were born before you came to be i dreamed a love song on a butterfly sea look at the artist she's amazing yeah how did you, you see the butterfly? Or see, hold on, you don't interrupt my reading. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the I'm waters that together. day whispered yeah. truths in my ears of hopes for you love for your life through the years. May your feet trace new patterns on warm sandy shores. May you dive into waves and yearn to explore. But if you get lost in the ocean's vast tides, take heart, my child, I'll be by your side. Mm. And then there are a few more excerpts I'll share with you. I liked this paragraph. May you take the high road, though the road may be long, pledge to follow your heart so your heart will be strong. And the, the pictures are it's, it's incredible. Did a great job. Jamie Kim, she's amazing. May you strive to be happy, change your course if you're not, embrace the world's colors, colors others forgot. And that hmm. reminds me, if there's a child in your classroom, fourth grade, there was a little boy that sat next to me and he um, had some challenges. and. It was my joy to help him with scissors and with coloring and things like that. So I think of him when I, when I wrote that. Embrace the world's colors, colors others forgot. Never forget the ones that might not have. Um, that is beautiful. So when you wrote that, did your image of mom and daughter or son for the yeah. kid, that was and when the publisher sent it to me, I went into her nursery. I was pregnant at the time. Didn't know if I was having a little girl or a little boy. And I went into her nursery, and I wanted to read it for the first time there. And I just wept because I was so excited. <laughs> I got this job, pregnant with my baby. It was just all at once and then the book. So I'm so, so grateful. Wow. So grateful. So but today's a huge day. It launches today. You yes. could order pre order last night. You're yeah. on with Sean on the radio. Yeah. And today is a great time to order it, Thank especially you. because uh, with the holidays here, this is a great book Thank to you. get for the holidays and get well, it out of proceeds. the way in November. Yeah. Proceeds yeah. going you know, to folds of folds of honor. That's oh, amazing. That's really yeah. cool. And America knows Major you. Dan they know, your, they know your heart. And when you know Thanks. you know the person that wrote the book, I think you have an additional special connection right. to it. So so Angelie comes in and says, you know, my book launches today, and I said. Uh, tomorrow and she goes, yeah she goes do you have a copy oh yeah he goes can i have it i don't have mine <laughs> she took, my, <laughs> I took, took your took copy the book out of my okay, office here you can have it back all right thank you very much <laughs> uh, congratulations <laughs> thank you well, this is dad deal. will be here thank with you. hayden at 8 30. yes they have all types of demands they want a car it's got to be a limo it's got to be a certain amount of time <laughs> and they need we this need green m ms in the green room exactly. brian get on it Done. meanwhile it's my turn to toss to janice dean do you want to stay here or do you want me to go to the weather wall you know what you make the call want to do okay move over pete you're always welcome Let's take a look at the weather. You know what? I, the reason I'm in the studio is because I'm a wimp. I didn't bring my rain boots. It is pouring rain outside, so already I'm a diva here on the second day of Fox <laughs> & Friends. 51 in New York. It's 40 in Chicago. 54 in Rapid City.
warmer than average across the central U.S., 15 to 25 degrees above average. And we have this coastal low. If it was a little bit cooler, we would be talking about snow across the northeast because this is a coastal system. Uh, but across the northwest, well, here's the northeast, first of all. It's going to be a messy commute if you live across anywhere from the mid-Atlantic up towards the northeast. New England could get heavy rainfall. And there are your temperatures too warm for snow. And this is the time of year that we could potentially see a nor'easter. But that is not going to happen because the temperatures are too warm. And then across the northwest that's our next system and that actually could bring the potential for the birth, first big snowfall for the northern plains and the upper midwest so we'll be watching that and congratulations Ainsley I am yes. so proud Thanks, of you Janice. so proud of you proud Russell. of you aww Freddie the Frogcaster. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Brian. Right. Hey, uh, if Brian. someone could find Heather now, she used to be over there, and somebody moved her. She's right there. Good morning. Congratulations, Good morning. Ainsley. We're also happy thank and proud you. of you. Uh, good morning to all of you. A couple of the news headlines I want to bring you right now. There's a brand new bombshell ruling for the star of the Netflix series Making a Murderer. Brendan Dassey is set to be released from jail after a Wisconsin judge overturned his conviction, saying Dassey was coerced. A near disaster on a packed flight as pilots go to drastic measures to avoid crashing into a drone. One of the 54 terrified passengers on board the Canadian Porter Airlines flight posting this photo with the caption, scary flight moment, but we made it safe and sound. She says the plane took a sudden dip, causing everyone to scream. Two flight attendants were hurt. And these A-listers all said they would leave the country if President-elect Donald Trump won the election. Well, it turns out they're crying wolf. So now an Oklahoma traffic reporter is stepping up and leading the way to Canada. Watch this. So I know a lot of people said that if their candidate lost the election, they'd be moving to Canada. Not sure why, but that was some of the folks' promises out there. So let me give you the quickest and directest route to Canada from Tulsa. When you get to Canada, you're going to hit the, the border here. Make sure you've got your either your card or your passport. <laughs> How funny is that? Make sure you got your card or your passport from the Oklahoma traffic guy. Well, we'll check back in to see if this uh, growing list ever made it to Canada or not. Well, if you're eating breakfast right now, you may want to put it down. A woman makes a gross discovery. She found, look at that, see a little paw coming out right there? Yeah, she found a dead mouse, and it was sewn right into her brand new dress from Zara. Brian says, so what? Who cares? Gross. The woman in Connecticut says she wore the dress to work. Oh, no. Unaware of that dead rodent until it brushed up against her leg. Maybe those little nails scratched her. Well, now she's suing Zara, saying the, house, the mouse smelled awful and made her sick. And if you haven't seen it already, check out the cover of today's New York Post of mice and ham. Get it? Yeah, those are your headlines. She wore it and didn't know. Like, wouldn't wow. you feel a big lump? Uh, eventually, uh, she did. One and of the reasons why Pete and I do wow. not wear dresses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We do not want a mouse. No mouse. Thank you very much, Heather. All right, President-elect Donald Trump refusing to back off his plans to deport criminal illegal immigrants. We're getting them out of our country or we're going to incarcerate. But we're getting them out of our country. They're here illegally. Judge Napolitano says his critics are fighting a losing battle. He is live to explain that. Next. Right. The judge used to walk. What happened? <laughs> and Facebook under fire for helping Donald Trump get elected? Am I, st am I drinking again? Should the social media police be allowed to fact check posts made by conservatives? We have a quick look at headlines for you this morning. Facebook and Google are taking a hard line banning fake news sites. The misleading pages can't advertise on the social media site or search engine anymore. The move comes over mounting criticism on how false news stories might have influenced the presidential election. And listen to this. From fake news to fake conversations. Guys, you all have to listen to this. It's pretty funny. Twitter erupting with memes of what Joe Biden could be saying to the president before they leave office. For example, look at this one. Come on. You got to print a fake birth certificate, put it in an envelope labeled secret, and leave it in the Oval Office desk. He also says there's no way he'll tell them the Wi Fi password. And he tells Mike Pence, so you're going to be the VP? Well, then don't you dare touch my coloring books. <laughs> I love that one. Brian, those are cute, aren't they? No, I'm, a, I'm all business today, Ainsley. Thank you very much. That was the top of it. <laughs> That was the top of the judge's head. You'll see his whole face in a second. <laughs> hey, it's been a cornerstone of President-elect Trump's campaign, and he's not backing down off his tough stance on immigration. 
and it looks like the law is on his side, even if Congress does not agree. Here to explain, Fox News Senior Judicial Analyst Andrew Napolitano. Judge, we're playing off the fact that a lot of mayors have come up and said, you know, we're not kicking our illegals out. Uh, we have sanctuary cities. All right. Sanctuary cities are not cities where the federal government can't enforce the law. They are cities where the locals will not help the feds enforce the law. Can the federal government force local police to enforce federal law? Answer, no. Can the police aggressively, local police, aggressively resist the feds? No. Can they stand silent? Yes. So, a person is, has contact with the NYPD. The NYPD knows this person's here illegally. Under Mayor de Blasio, they will not report that person to the feds. The feds will have to find him. Under Mayor Giuliani, they would have reported that person to the feds, hung on to him or her until the feds came to take that person away. President-elect Trump actually has the law on his side because Congress has given American presidents great leeway to make a determination based on national security, national sovereignty, and the resources available about who should be deported and who should not be. Some of the states have pushed forward and said, uh, leave, our, leave our illegals alone. Uh, Philadelphia, New York, uh, Chicago, uh, LA. You know, L.A., San Francisco. Uh, look at That was just off the top of my head. I think you're pretty impressed by that. Now the map came in to say, help I'm me. Impressed by Thank you Brian. very much. Uh, Minneapolis uh, and Seattle. So, uh, Judge, they're saying leave my illegals alone. So that but doesn't go. mean that illegals can't be deported from there. It just means that the local authorities, police and civilian authorities in those cities, will not right. help the federal government enforce immigration law. No, I hear you. Uh, having said that, let's look at the, the reality of it. Donald Trump has made it clear after his initial announcement that he is going to focus on securing the border and getting criminals, illegals here who are criminals, out of the country. Do you also see that there'll be pressure on those mayors to not protect criminals in their midst? Absolutely. Look, yesterday, Rahm Emanuel, of all people, said, you know, come to Chicago and you'll be safe. The No one's safe in Chicago. Well, correct. That's really ridiculous to say that about Chicago. But the unintended, unintended consequences of that is going to be more pressure on the social welfare of the of the city, probably sure. more crime, probably more uh, congestion, the types of things that mayors have, are, have a difficult time dealing with. Yeah, especially Ron Emanuel in particular. And uh, the president also said yesterday, don't touch DACA, which means kids taken here as infants, young kids, four or five year olds, get to stay because he had an executive order. That's going to be a little bit tougher well, politically. Well, that illegally. executive order was invalidated by the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals and the Supreme Court tied on whether or not to, to uh, overturn it. So the executive order is out. Donald Trump, President-elect Trump, will have to issue his new executive order as to how he wants to uh, address it. That executive order pertains to the illegal parents of legal children. So illegals come in this country and have a child. Should you separate the child, who's right. an American citizen, from the parents who are here illegally? That's a problem that the Trump administration is going to have to confront very soon. I'm just getting word. Judge, every time you appear on our show, you get the Fox & Friends home game. Today... What's the, the home game? The home game is you get to uh, pretend you're Fox & Friends during the, at home, like Password. Oh. But today, because Ainsley's book launch, you get 25% off the cover price. I get 25% off the cover price. You're sure you me a free one. Really? No. Well, this, you're going to charge you at the end. It's a typical... <laughs> Ainsley Earhart move. Hey, let me tell you what's straight ahead. Remember when President-elect Trump made this prediction about all American companies moving overseas? They're going to call me up within 24 hours. They're going to say, Mr. President, do you have any second thoughts? I say, absolutely not. They say, sir, we've decided to stay in the United States. Go ahead, Judge. Finish my job. Can you make that happen? A worker whose job is moving to Mexico is here next. You're playing the home game. Keep going. And Trump campaign manager Kellyanne Conway, my, my childhood friend from New Stick Jersey, to the prompter, is here next hour as the Trump administration quickly takes shape. Could she be joining his cabinet? Brian, thank you for letting me do this. Are you just about done now? <laughs> I call up. I say, hi, Donald Trump, President of the United States. I hope, I hope... You enjoy your stay in Mexico. Every single air conditioning unit that you make and comes across the border into the United States, we're going to charge you a 35% tax. They're going to call me up within 24 hours. They're going to say, Mr. President, do you have any second thoughts? I say, absolutely not. They say, sir, we've decided to stay in the United States.
President-elect Donald Trump won the White House on that very message, keeping manufacturing jobs here in the U.S. And it all really started at Carrier Air Conditioning, where Paul Rowell had been a loyal employee for 17 years, and they all get the word, because someone's rolling, rolling an iPhone, that they're all going to be laid off and their plant is moving. Mm -hmm. Paul, are you pretty relieved that it is now President-elect Trump? Yes, yes I am. Why? Um, I feel that he's going to carry through on his promise to keep more manufacturing jobs in the United States. Um, I honestly don't believe he's going to be able to keep Carrier, but I'm very hopeful that he can. And it's, it's not the sole reason I voted for him. Paul, Paul, what's your story? You were there at 17 years at Carrier. You know, what happened when you found out that, that it was moving? Um, it was just, it felt like somebody just punched me in the gut when I was standing there listening to the executive just in a very cold manner telling us our jobs are going away and I mean I'm just still trying to figure out where I'm gonna go after a carrier mm. we're looking at the video of when you guys all got the news that you were losing your jobs what do you expect now from Donald Trump now that he's won um, I expect him to hopefully just follow 